morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to God for giving us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. Hallelujah. We know that if we do the things that we read in the scripture, we will have a good understanding. And there are a lot of people, there have always been a lot of people, who like to argue and contend about the Word of God. And so this is something that we all encounter, especially as Christians when we're walking by faith and abiding in the scripture, that we find that the more we are on the narrow way, the more it is that religious people particularly come against us and try to confound us with religious arguments. And so I thought to make a video today to ad address this issue in particular and, and to comfort those of you who encounter this, as I often do. So let's consider what Jesus Christ had to say about these things, and let's begin today in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only by pride cometh contention. Pride is the opposite of humility. Pride sees something that it wants, and instead of humbling itself to obtain it, what it seeks to do is to prove that the simple things of God are incorrect. And so we have entering into our time, particularly theology. So theology is the practice of religious and proud men and women who try to dissect the scripture and go to foreign languages to reinterpret it so that the word of God doesn't mean what it actually says. So it's basically the pride of man disputing with the simplicity of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, unless you become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So we want to become as little children, and the way that we do this is we, with a simple and pure heart, consider the word of God and do what it says. Jesus Christ said, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and keep it, and keep it. And to keep it means to keep, hold ourselves to it, to do it, and to keep it in our heart always. And verily I say unto you, if you do this, you won't be confounded by the contentions of the proud. Hallelujah. So let's go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's read here verse. Let's start here in verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many no mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. 
And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So we understand that Jesus Christ came into the world and was rejected by the religious authorities of his time. We understand as his people that we will also be rejected. And we can see when we read in the Gospels about the Lord, how religious people, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, came to him with, with trick questions, with religious arguments, with legalistic accusations, and they rejected him because they were looking through the lens of their own desire for political power, for control over the people, and to be highly esteemed of men. To be highly esteemed of men. But we understand as God's people that the wisdom of men is foolishness with God. And if somebody comes to us with some kind of convoluted argument, saying, for example, that God is actually not one God, he's actually got three different aspects or faces or personalities or what have you. Those of us who abide in the scripture don't need to argue with them. We might say to them, but that's not what the word of God says. And show them what Jesus had to say about that, maybe once or twice. But after that, as the scripture saith, a man that is an heretic after the first or second admonition reject. You see, wise men don't like the simplicity of the truth of God's word. And they like to argue about it. And the thing is, is that the fact that that is what is in their heart is to argue about it. We can see that they are blinded by their own iniquity, their own pride. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And let's read here verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They became fools. And there's much in Romans chapter 1 about the consequences for this kind of pride. But we who love the Lord understand the simplicity that is in Jesus Christ, and that our righteousness doesn't come from our own mental confabulations and distortions and, and so forth. Our righteousness comes by abiding in the word of God and doing what it says. It's actually very simple. And anyone who wants to understand the truth, if they read the word of God and do what it says, they will be given a good understanding because that is what is promised in the Word of God. It's actually very simple. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And let's read starting here in verse 23. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Why is it that so many people who profess to be Christians, disobey the word of God, 
Why is it that they can't see the simple truths that are in Scripture? It's because they prefer to follow after their own heart and follow after men and women who are following after their own heart instead of seeking God in his word and getting their understanding from him. Jesus Christ said, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And I'm telling you the truth, and I'm telling you what the word of God says. But if you don't read the word of God for yourself, you won't know if I'm lying or not. Verily I say unto your enemy knows if you're not abiding in the scripture. And he can very easily confound you with things that seem right, but are in fact distortions, religious distortions by proud men and women who want power and control over you. And verily I say unto you, any true servant of Jesus Christ will tell you to get into the word of God for yourself and to not exalt them above what they ought to be esteemed to be because we are all servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have one master. We have one master. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy and chapter 10. Starting in verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Hallelujah. Behold, the heaven and the earth, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord hath a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you, above all people, in this, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked ready to God. So pride and stubbornness we understand from the Holy Scripture as as the sin of iniquity and idolatry and witchcraft. Those who choose to follow after their own pride and their own self-righteousness are not wise at all. They have become fools and then they have set the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face and therefore cannot see and therefore cannot see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Let's read in verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You see, as Christians, we believe the word of God and we do what it says. And that begins by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ and circumcising our heart. Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the circumcision of the heart. When we do this, the veil of sin is taken away from us. Our sins are remitted in Jesus' name. And then we can understand as we never understood before. 
because until our sins are remitted, we truly cannot see very much. We can see the kingdom, perhaps, and that we desire to be holy. But we also know that we must obey what the Lord said. And the Lord said that unless a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom. If we want to enter the kingdom, we can't just believe. We also have to do. Verily I say unto you, belief is something that brings forth action. Belief brings forth action action. And people who don't fear God and don't want to follow his commandments will make up all kinds of religious excuses to not obey the very simple gospel of Jesus Christ. They'll say, well, Jesus said, you know, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And so I'm going to believe Jesus rather than Peter, which is absurd because Peter preached the same gospel that Jesus Christ commanded him to preach. And he said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But the thing is, is that people who are so confounded with religious ideas and religious pride that they will not obey God for example, they will not open the Word of God and read it for themselves. They will not open the Word of God and read it for themselves and do what it says. And when they refuse to do what it says, they are blinded by their own iniquity and pride. So only by pride cometh contention, my sisters. When someone comes to us with religious arguments, it's really very simple what we must do. We, we don't try to prove them wrong. We don't try to prove ourselves right. We see, simply speak the word of God once or twice. And if they can't hear it, then we gently and gracefully depart from them and, and perhaps pray for them. Because God alone can change hearts. We meekly and humbly understand that the word that we have been given that brings forth life in us is something that was a gift from God. We didn't do it ourselves. We were given the love of the truth. We were given the, the desire to love and obey God. And so we don't vaunt ourselves to be any special thing. Rather, we recognize that there is one who is deserving of all the glory. And it certainly is not our flesh or our wisdom or something that we have done. We are vessels for the seed. And if we are obedient and good and faithful in this wicked world to testify unto others, then we will share in the eternal inheritance of glory with our betrothed husband, Jesus Christ. Verily I say unto you, as they hated him, they will hate us. And as they sought to confound and trick him, so they will try to confound and trick us, but the simplicity of Jesus Christ is this, that we hear him, we love him, and because we love him, we do as he commanded. And he commanded us to continue in his word. So I want to close now. Let's go to John chapter 15. And let's start here in verse one, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, so more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same 
bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Praise be to God. I pray this message has been a blessing to you, my sisters. And may the word of God go forth today and edify many today in Jesus' mighty name. Feel free to email me if you like. My email is always in the description box underneath the video. And may we all continue in the word of God, faithfully, diligently, receiving the truth from God himself as little children, walking in the light of his holy truth. In Jesus' name, amen.